Hey folks, Quilly Team here, and welcome to Let's Play some Twilight Struggle. Twilight Struggle is a real-life board game themed around the Cold War. It's a two-player game. One player is the Americans, the other is the Soviets, and you battle it out for control over the world in some way. It is unbelievably strategic. It is really good. It came out, I think, in 2006, the uh, the, the, the the paper version. It wasn't, wasn't a huge bestseller because, I mean... The subject matter might not be necessarily for everyone, and it's a fairly complex strategy game, uh, but it is has been rated as one of the best games of all time for a very long time. It's gotten, I think, um, I just got finally, finally a real-life copy of it, um, and I think it's the seventh printing, so they've been doing okay, I'd say, for themselves. Anyway, let's jump in. I did a video for this once, only almost three years ago, of the digital version of Twilight Struggle, and it is time for us to play again. The last time I played, I played as the Americans, so we're going to go and play as the Soviets over here. Um, we are going to play with the optional cards, which does tend to improve things a little bit for the Americans. That being said, high-level players, um, the Soviet side is considered to be stronger than the American side by quite a bit. In tournament play, people tend to bid um, for control, mostly of the Soviets, um, and offer a influence handicap to the Americans of some amount to to balance it out. Some people say that with the optional cards and an influence handicap about two to the Americans, that might be okay. Some people argue that the optional cards is is fine. You don't need the influence handicap. And some people in super high levels might give a huge benefit. I think, I think how powerful the Soviets are directly correlates to how good the player is, because the Soviets have. Um, they have all the momentum in the game. Every turn, they play first, and they also start with potentially a slightly stronger initial board position. And Soviets are all about the early game. As the game goes on, the Americans gain access to more and more powerful cards, but I think a really strong player can just use that Soviet tempo aggressively to gain a stranglehold over the game. However, I think if you're a weak player, even though the Americans are considered to be potentially a little bit weaker than the Soviets, the Americans are probably easier for a weaker player to play because they're more reactive. And I would suggest, I'm betting, that if it was two brand new players to the game, I think there's probably a good chance the Americans will start off with, with the edge. So I'm gonna go with no influence handicap here. Um, because I think the AI has a good enough chance to beat the crap out of me uh, because I haven't played that much and I haven't played in that in a while. Anyway, let's jump in. If you've never played this game before, don't worry. There's going to be a fair amount of tutorial introduction to a lot of the concepts. Here is the world map. I am the Soviet Reds and we got the Americans way over here played by the AI. Uh, there are a number of countries all over the, the world that we will be competing to control um, in some aspect. There are these different scoring regions, for example, Europe, Central America, Africa, South America, Middle East, Asia, and Southeast Asia. And when I said, for example, I apparently meant I'm going to list them all. There are scoring cards that you might get. I don't have one in my hand right now, um, but occasionally a player will draw scoring cards. When a scoring card gets played, um, the region of that scoring card then gets scored. For example, my opponent, I don't know, for all I know, may, the American has one of these in his hand right now, may have the Europe scoring card in his hand. Um, assuming he does and he plays it, what would happen is both of us would tally up how much control we have in Europe and that would give us a points total, and the difference between the points is what's actually earned. So right now, the Americans have six or three points worth of stuff in Europe. I have four points worth of stuff, so that means I would get a net one point if the European scoring card were played right now. Um, we start at zero points. This is a tug of war victory count over here. It is a tug of war. If I earn points, it goes in my favor. If the American earns points, it swings back in his favor. At any point, should one player have a net of 20 points, they immediately win. Alternatively, we play until uh, round 10. There's also a way for the game to end if someone triggers nuclear war, which would be a bad thing. Don't do that. We'll talk about that more later on as we go. Each nation here has a, so has a position and has room on it for influence from either the American player or the Russian player, or the Soviet player, I should say, or both. Both both players may have influence in the same country. The person who controls the country is the person who has a net influence equal to or greater than the stability of the country. So, for example, East Germany here has a stability rating of three. I have three influence here, which means I have control over Germany. UK has a stability of five. The Americans have five influence there, so they have control over the UK. If we go down to the Middle East over here, you can see that there's a few countries where myself, so I have Syria and Iraq, and the Americans, Israel and Iran, have some influence, but we don't have as much influence as the stability of the nation, so none of us are considered to control any one of these nations. When it comes to scoring a region, 
if you have control of at least one nation in the region, you count as having a presence. Domination is the next level up. You can upgrade from presence to domination. So you don't add these together. If you're both present and dominant, you don't get 10 points. You get the seven points. Domination means you have more battlegrounds and more countries than your opponent does. Um, you have to have at least one non-battleground and one battleground to have domination. So at the, the, the minimum you need to have domination is you would need to own one battleground and none, one non-battleground country, and your opponent would have to have no more than a single non-battleground, for example. And that would give you domination. And then finally, there's control. Control is if you have all the battlegrounds and more stuff than your opponent, including at least one non-battleground. Europe is quite special. If you have full control over Europe, you do instantly win the game when Europe gets scored. Um, so there's another way for the game to end, although I haven't seen that happen uh, to me yet. But hey, maybe this will be the time. So we'll talk about the cards and stuff later on. This is the setup phase. The Soviets always go first. Soviets have to place six extra influence. What we're going to do here is we're going to place an extra influence in East Germany to help um, we're over controlling it. We're protecting it by having an extra buffer here. This is the standard opener, by the way. The other thing is to put four in Poland. So three gives us control. A fourth one as some extra defense. I don't have a comic on there. No. Okay. Um, and then finally, the other standard start for the Soviet is to put one point in Yugoslavia because whereas right now at the start of the game, the starter influence I can place anywhere in East Europe which is the highlighted stuff that you're seeing over here. So there's one scoring area for Europe, but it is split between Western and Eastern Europe for various card effects. Um, as the Soviets, I place in East Europe, the Americans place in West Europe. After this, there will be plenty of times where we'll be adding more influence to the map. Usually you can only place influence either in a country where you already have some sort of presence, like um, I will be able to put influence later on into Iraq, for example, because I'm there, or adjacent to a country where you have some amount of presence. So later on, I could also add influence to say Jordan or the Gulf states, for example, um, or Lebanon or Iran, um, not Israel. Okay, no, I could do Israel from Syria. Notice these little lines over here. Israel and Iraq are not considered adjacent for game purposes here. So keep that in mind. Anyway, Yugoslavia is fairly standard. So I'm gonna do this and it may mostly is gonna force the Americans to make sure they play into Italy right away because otherwise, and that's what they're going to do down. This is the, the standard American start is four in West Germany and three in Italy, because otherwise I'd be able to put some influence into Italy immediately and take control. Americans have over protected or over controlled Italy. They need two, but they have three. They only have four and four in West Germany, but that tends to be OK. Uh, Germany, um, any, anything with a stability of three or higher is very stable and very difficult to coup, which is one of the actions we're going to do. Anyway, the pregame setup is over. We're now officially on round one, on turn one. And the first thing we have to do is we each have to choose one card to highlight. So cards have a bunch of stuff going on. If we look at destalinization over here, for example, they have an op score in the top left corner. The op score is actually what you're going to use the most probably on the cards, I assume. Uh, again, you know, I've, I've played the game enough to know, you know, the basics, how to play it. But in terms of um, you know, master strategy, far from it. And I'll sometimes make, you know, general st statements like usually, the, you know, the, the thing that interests you about the card is maybe the ops value. And these things might be just completely wrong. Um, but yes, what we're doing now is we're headlining. The headline is not going to use the ops value at all. So we'll talk about that later. All it's going to do is trigger the event over here. Um, and there's some, uh, there's some potent ones. Now, some of these cards are American cards. For example, Marshall Plan. See, it's got a, this white star background. That's a US event, as opposed to something that's got a red star, which is a Soviet event. Now I can play any of these cards. I can headline any of these and trigger the events, but the American ones will be good for the Americans. The Soviet ones will be good for me. Taking a little sip over here. Now, in terms of the first play, do I destalinization right away? I don't think so. Although I could. So destalinization is weird because it just lets me relocate influence. Um, so from any of my countries to any country not currently controlled by the US. Destalinization is powerful because it lets us place influence places where I normally can't with no adjacency, for example. And it is one of the ways we're going to get into South America and, and probably Africa as well. Uh, South and Central America as well as Africa because we can't, we can't just reach there. Um, through normal means. Uh, although we do also have Fidel, which is interesting because what it does is it puts influence in Cuba for us. So we can get to three influence in Cuba right away. Now, the, um, the scoring regions of Europe, Middle East, and Asia are the only ones that are in the early war deck, which is currently what we're on. All these cards are from the early war deck. Um, whereas Southeast Asia, Africa, and the two Americas 
are in the mid-war deck, which gets shuffled in on turn number four. Or, yeah. Um, hold on. Yeah, right here. See, mid-war? There. I was like, wait, wrong numbers. Um, so three turns of early war, then we shuffle in the mid-war cards here, and then finally shuffle in some late-war cards over there. So we don't have to worry about scoring over here. So Destalinization and Fidel set us up well for the mid-game, but aren't necessarily critical right this second. Korean War is interesting. North Korea invades South Korea. This gives us a chance to just gain control over South Korea right away. Um, this gets harder for every U.S. country adjacent to South Korea. So if the U.S. starts to control Japan or Taiwan or North Korea somehow, that becomes a harder thing to pull off. Um, that being said, it does remove um, U.S. influence as well. Like it replaces all U.S. influence with uh, Soviet influence. Um, and it is just a replace. So it doesn't, it will just move one, right? Replace all US. So it would flip it from one to one, um, which may or may not be what we're looking for. So all that to say, I don't know what I want to play. I mean, I, I, could, I could just play Nasser. Nasser's nice because it does remove influence from Egypt, but is it that important? My first move is probably going to be to Kui Iran. That is a very standard thing. So this is one of those areas where, in terms of the gameplay, I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what the most important thing to do. I feel like destalinization doesn't have to be rushed. What if we just headline the Cambridge Five so we can take a peek at his hand and know what the hell to expect? And that there are no international problems which men of goodwill cannot solve. Let me just do that. I don't know if that's the right move. Oh, CIA created. Okay, so... Interesting. So I'm going to reveal... With the CIA created, I have to reveal my hand to the Americans. And then he gets to do an op. And with Cambridge 5, he has to reveal his hand, or he has to reveal scoring cards only. So he has the European scoring card in his hand. So we know, and he's going to be forced to play it this turn. So there's going to be some competition over here. Now, I can place one influence anywhere in Europe because he's got the European scoring card. That is really interesting. I could place it in West Germany, which would break his control over West Germany. Give me presence here, which means I could then play some uh, some cards and, and grab some influence over France. At the very least, I'm going to do this. Normally, it costs you basically two points to break control. So to go, um, so he's got control right now, so I'd have to put two influence to get a single point of influence here. Except with this, it just puts one directly, so it's a cheap way to break it. I'm going to go ahead and do that. All right, so he's seen my hand. Um, and I don't know, like the AI in this is pretty good. Uh, certainly well enough to beat me most of the time. Um, you know, not, not being a top-end player, I'm sure. Probably not even the remotest challenge to a top-end player. But a fair bit to me over here. So yeah, he's going to get to do... I don't know what he did with the rest of his move here. Uh, CIA created. Um, scroll, 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 scroll. Uh, oh, he put an extra point into Iran. Okay. Fair enough. Um, so, I think I'm just going to play this for a coup. What is this again? Oh, yeah. I'm going to give some points. Um, wait, wait, this is a little... Yeah, I'm still going to coup Iran. I'm going to use destalinization. Now, let's talk about what you can use a card for. So, you can use the ops points of a card for three different things. Either you can use the place influence. So, if I did this, I would get to place three influence anywhere that I'm allowed to place. So, where I'm present or adjacent to. Um, so, that lets me put three influence points. Keep in mind, if someone has control over something. So, if I want to put an influence into Iran, the first point would actually cost me two. And then after that, he's broken so that I could keep adding it. Oh, it's also worth noting I can't chain influence. So I would not be able to, for example, um, I'm trying to think of a good place to show it off. Uh, right, so um, if I could place influence right now in France because it's next to West Germany. If I put a point in France, I cannot then go and put it into Spain slash Portugal because I didn't have influence there at the start of my action. So you can't just chain that way. Put it into France, and then next action, I would play another card, and then I'd be able to put it into Spain slash Portugal, for example. Um, the other thing you can do with the ops is coup, which is a very powerful. The way a coup works is you look at a country, you take its stability, and multiply it by two. That's your target. So for Iran, our target is going to be a four. You roll a six-sided die and add the ops point of the card you play. So in this case, it'll be plus three. And if that beats the stability number, what you do is you remove influence from your opponent until they have none left, and then start adding your own until you've made up you know, the, the whole difference. So anyway, I'm gonna use the destalinization. I'm going to use it to coup. 
Iran over here. So we'll get a little breakdown of our possible dice rolls over here. So if we roll a, um, so our target, yeah, is a two. We're adding, or the target's a four, because it's this multiplied by two. We've got a plus three over here. So if we run a, a if we roll a three, three plus three is six. That's a difference of two above the, the doubled stability. So that would be a two point win. So I'd remove two influence. If I roll better than that, I'll actually end up with influence over here. I rolled a three, which is enough to strip out all the American influence from Iran. I would have preferred it maybe if I had more stuff. Well, except. Anyway, a few other things happened here. A coup that happens in the battleground state will degrade the death comp. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a bit. Um, the other thing is when you do a coup, you gain military operation credit. Uh, so, Defcon chain over here. I have three points of military operations because I used a three point card to do this. At the end of the entire turn, um, which is after we're done playing all our cards for this entire round or whatever, um, if you don't have as many mill ops as the DEFCOM, you will actually lose points. So if the game, if the round were to end right now at four DEFCOM, I would lose one point because I'm at three. Americans would lose four. Okay, Americans are going to play UN, UN Intervention for an event, which lets them play one of my cards without triggering the side effect. He's going to use the coup North Korea and fail terribly. This, this pleases me. So normally... If I were to use, so if I used a card like I just did, I used my card to do a coup, I didn't get the event, right? So my um, my destalinization, I used it for ops, the event didn't trigger. This is because it was my event. I could have played it for the event. Instead of using it for a coup or for influence, I could have played it for the event, in which case it would have just done that, which is pretty good, but it's discarded, it's gonna get reshuffled, it's going to be fine. Uh, once this card in particular, because the asterisk and note here, if this gets played for the event, then it gets removed from play and won't come back. But this one will. Um, and that's good, because I'm going to want it later, and hopefully it's okay. Maybe I made a mistake by playing it, but I don't know. Um, whereas, if you play an opponent's card, so if I play um, Duck and Cover here for the three ops points, the opponent's event still triggers. So, with my opponent here, normally when he played... Um, what the hell? The D intervention again. Oh, Socialist Governance. If he had played Socialist Governance, I would have removed a bunch of influence in Western Europe, but he used e UN Intervention to prevent the event from triggering, which was a good play over there. Um, he attempted to coup North Korea. He failed. That's really wonderful. The other thing that's really nice about my successful coup in Iran over here is now, see, the Americans had presence here. Now they don't. So they would have been able to play influence in, say, Pakistan or Afghanistan, right? Which is adjacent to Iran, except now they can't because it's not adjacent to anything they control. That's huge. In fact, clearing this, it may have been better than leaving, say, one behind, because if I'd left one, that you can only coup a nation where your opponent has some sort of influence. With no influence in Iran, he can't coup, and he can't spread influence here. So that's quite good. So leaving one might have been bad. Leaving more than one would have been okay because it would have been harder for him to successfully coup me out completely. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to complain, especially with the failed coup in North Korea over there. So we know the only scoring card he has in his hand is Europe. So let's focus a little bit over there. Um, what we'll probably do is play more of my personal events here. Um, yeah, we can save the China card for a bit. I'm wondering about playing some more in West Germany just to make it harder for him to gain control. I know I don't want a Marshall plan here. Okay, we can we can have Fidel. Unless, do I just want a China card and use it all in Europe? You know what I will. So the China card is weird. It's worth four points, and whoever uses it, actually, you always get you get plus one operations when you use all these points within Asia. Then you pass it to the other player face down, so they can't use it right away until next turn. But the China card goes back and forth, back and forth. The Soviets start with it, which is one of the other reasons they have uh, such huge tempo. But yeah, I'm used to place influence. Now we haven't talked about realignment rolls yet. We will at some point, but now is. Is it time? Out of curiosity. Oh, never mind. Okay. So, coups and realignment are two. You know, semi-sneaky things you can do. As the DEFCOM level drops, there are restrictions on where you can do that. So you can see here at 5, everything is fine. Once you hit 4, you can't coup or realign Europe. 3, can't do Asia. 2, you can't do Middle East. Um, so those get sort of restricted off over there. So I can't coup or realign. Realign um, is similar-ish to a coup. Realign, both players roll dice and add a plus one to their die roll for every country 
adjacent to the target that they control. So if I were to try to realign West Germany, I would get plus one to my rolls because I control East Germany and the Americans would get no bonuses because they don't control anything adjacent. The person with the highest roll gets to remove that much influence from the other person's side. Realignments can never add influence and sometimes it can backfire and you can lose influence there. Uh, mostly it comes up if you surround it. The op value of the realignment card does not modify your die roll, but you actually get as many realignment rolls as the ops on the card. You can use them all in the same country, you can split them up, you can do whatever you want. Anyway, for here, I'm going to play this for influence. I'm going to go and take France. I think I'm going to overprotect France. Because otherwise, with, with a three, they could spend two influence to add an influence, and that would break it, because it'd be three, one, and we wouldn't have control. Here, they'd have to do that twice to break me, which is pretty unlikely. Now, because I don't control a non-battleground, I don't have domination over Europe. I'm still only present. I need to have a single non-battleground, but I do get plus one for controlling each, for each battleground I control. Now, the Americans do have the opportunity to do another coup here. So, a coup on a battleground, what are you doing? You're using containment to play influence, okay. Oh, okay, you broke my control over North Korea. And the other point went... Did you play into Lebanon? Lebanon, okay. Uh, which might be setting up for a bit of a realignment. I don't know, not really. Huh, curious. Um, I was saying something else I don't remember. Doesn't matter. Let's see if we can get ourselves domination in Europe. I think I'm going to play a couple into Yugoslavia here. So... Actually, let me play duck and cover now. So this is going to decrease the death calm by one, which will put it to, which means if anyone were to coup a battleground nation, cooing a battleground nation lowers death calm. If you were to coup a battleground ground nation, bring death calm from two to one, thermonuclear war would start and you would lose. The person whose turn it is, if the death calm goes to one on their turn, they instantly lose the game. It's very tricky because there's some cards you can play on your turn which give your opponent a chance to act, and if their action causes the DEFCOM to drop to one on your turn, you lose. These are called DEFCOM suicide cards. You have to be really careful about that. Yeah, I'll go ahead and use this. This will give the Americans um, two victory points. Oh, wait, hold on. No, I'm, oh, I'm thinking the wrong one. You want the DEFCON level to be high when you play this, because if I did that, he would actually earn uh, three victory points. That's right, that's an early, early thing. Because what I wanted is I wanted to put two into Yugoslavia and one to North Korea. It might still be worthwhile. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play Fidel for influence. There you go, and you can see the European thing moved a bunch, because I now have domination. Now, he's not forced to play his Europe card yet. He has to play it before the turn is over. Otherwise, he instantly loses. If you end your turn with the scoring card in your hand, you lose. You have to play it. So at some point, he's going to be forced to play the European card. Mm -hmm. Nuclear test ban treaty for four influence. God, he had some power cards. All right, he's retaking West Germany. Fine, fair. So I'm back down to presence because I don't have a... Um, an overwhelming battleground, we have two each. And that gives him plus one to the battlegrounds. So yeah, one point over there, which is kind of okay. Now, I can't coup Europe or Asia. I can still coup in the Middle East, but Israel has like incredible amounts of stability, so you're never gonna coup that. Um, I could just coup somewhere in Africa. Now, you usually wanna take any opportunity to coup that you can, because it is it usually is a very point efficient move really point efficient. I'm wondering about doing that. Um, actually, it might be a really good time to play Truman Doctrine right now. So Truman Doctrine removes all USSR influence markers from an uncontrolled country in Europe. So some country that isn't controlled in Europe, I will lose all my influence. He's either going to be have to choose Finland or West Germany. No, oh, actually, West Germany is controlled by the Americans. Finland's the only option, so it will remove one influence from Finland. This is, like, possibly one of the safest times to use it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to use Truman here for a coup attempt. So he's only going to give me plus one to a roll, which is really bad. But Africa, because the stability is quite low, tends to be a pretty easy target. I mean, the lowest I can roll is a one plus one, which is two, which equals the 
uh, the status times two, right? So if I roll a one, nothing happens. If I roll anything better than a one, stuff happens, um, which is going to be okay. And this can de degrade the DEFCON status as well, which is going to prevent the Americans from cooing any battlegrounds. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And then his Truman Doctrine is going to fire and remove the one point from Finland. There are times when something really scary could happen. Um, where like, let's say he, he got a couple of influence in the France, right? So it's four to two, it's only two point difference. France would be uncontrolled. He could then maybe trigger the Truman Doctrine to remove my four points from France at that point, which would be devastatingly bad. And then that removes that event from the game. All right, Europe scoring is a go, which I'm fine with. I'll earn one point. The Americans are probably happy about this. Um, again, the tempo and the early game is all in the Soviets favor. So anything the Americans can do to sort of vaguely break even or at least not be too negative um, at the end of the early war, they'll be very, very, very pleased. And if they're still about even at, at the end of the mid war, I'd say the Americans are in a fantastic position because they should pick up a lot of late game points. Hmm. So. Europe has been scored, that's what that little token is. Um, in the early game deck, the Middle East and Asia, yeah, are, are still in there. So at some point, these scoring cards are going to come out, potentially next round, potentially on round three. So I want to, like, start putting in some work over here. Um, already, they have basically, they have no access to Western Asia because they've lost Iran here, which is really nice. Uh, they can spread in from the south this way. They can expand, of course, out of the east, perfectly fine. I think I'm going to play Naster for the event. Um, unless I just play him as is. What if I... Hmm. I don't think there's any point in playing Korean War for the event. I think I'm going to play this one for influence. I'm going to regain control over North Korea. I don't think I need to stress about overprotecting it right now. Um, instead, what I think I'd rather do... Um, if I put a point to Iran, it could open it up for a coup. Although, no, because I'm going to get to act first. You know what? I bet you I can totally do this. Because right now, if he coups Iran, he'll lose the game because of the DEFCON status. The big thing with the Soviets is, so at the start of every turn, the DEFCON improves by one. So it's going to be three next turn. Um, but I get first action all the time because I'm the Soviets. So if my first action is to coup a battleground, I'll drop the DEFCON back down to two, and the Americans will no longer be able to do a coup in the battleground. And keeping that kind of momentum is really important. He's playing Captured Nazi Scientist as an event. So there's a Space Race box! You may have noticed this is an option when I clicked on cards. Look at my turn over here. So this is my final action. So if I play on a card, like let's say, um, not Nasser, because he's too low. Let's say I look at Duck and Cover over here. So we talked Placing Influence. We talked about Realignment, though we haven't really shown it. We talked about Coups, and we've shown a few of those. There's Space Race. Space Race is different. See how all of these have the little American symbol? Because this is an American event. So if I do anything over here, it'll trigger the American event. Um, normally, if I ch if I hit one of these buttons, I'll do, say, place influence, and then afterwards the event will trigger. I can also choose to have the event go first, and then afterwards I get to choose if I want influence, realignment, or coup, for example. If you space race a card, if you send a card to space, it will not trigger the event at all. Um, and the space race is a good way to get rid of bad cards. You can also get victory points. If you're the pers first person to get an Earth satellite, you get two points. The Americans beat me to it. Second person Earth satellites only gets one point. First person man in space gets two. Second person gets zero. So there's certainly some victory points to be accomplished here in the space race. There's also some extra bonuses. If you're the first person to do animal in space, which isn't worth victory points, but it lets you start discarding two space race cards per turn. Once your opponent catches up over here, it cancels that out. So you don't get both people playing two space cards per turn. Instead, it goes back to neither one can do two per turn. Um, you can start this off by throwing away two ops cards, then it gets more expensive. Three ops cards over here or four over there. Um, the roll difficulty can change as well. So for Earth satellite, you need to roll a one to three. So it's 50-50 whether or not this will work. Um, I think as a new player, and especially the way like you know this appealed to me, I would really emphasize space race. And I think space race is really like, it's a nice bonus if you can get some. But you really want to focus on the main board over here, and that's just an extra little bonus. I think I'll just play Nasser. So this is my last action. So we're playing six actions this turn. We started with eight cards, um, plus one from the China card to so nine. Hold on. Did I discard an extra card or something? Oh, and the headline. Right, 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 right. So that makes sense. What if I just play him for himself? Well, the problem is I can't reach Egypt right now. I could play him for himself and get control over Iran. I could also play him so that I can put something into Pakistan. 
Uh, it does open us to a certain type of war. But again, there might be a scoring card here that happens. All right, I'm going to play you just for influence so you stay in the deck because, you know, the Americans might trigger him at some point. I still can't reach Egypt and Libya, though. You know what I could do while I'm in France? Well, I'm not going to lose out on France completely because it gives me a chance to move into Algeria. All right, I'll just control Iran. Enough thinking. Not thinking myself into a circle here, not doing anything. Well, 30 minutes in, we're still on turn one. All right, play that. At the end of the turn, we all have the correct amount of military operations given the DEFCON level, so no one loses any points. It's turn number two. Get cool quotes every time. I know I got the volume set pretty low, though, but they are pretty interesting. DEFCON goes up. So, again, we're back up to eight cards. Keep in mind, the Americans um, have the China card in their hand as well. We have the Asia scoring card, so at some point we're going to have to play this before the turn ends or we lose. The Americans may or may not have the Middle East card. I don't know, but all I know is that I've got this. Um, I do have the Indo-Pakistan war card in my hand. Um, what it does is it gives you victory points if you win this and replaces all your opponent's influence. Now, the nice thing about this is it means the Americans don't have it. So I can play into Pakistan and India and know that they can't use the war to flip me. Um, the other thing that's nice is, whoops, I have the Defectors card. Defectors can be played as a headline by the Americans um, to cancel the Soviet headline card. The fact that I've got this in my hand means that he doesn't have it in his, which makes me feel really quite good. Um, I could headline this to fight in Israel, but there's not much influence to flip there. I'm going to just headline the Olympic Games. It's a really weak headline card. But I don't think I'm really looking to play anything else for the event. Um, one of the things I could do is I could, you know, I could dump Special Relationship. It does get him put one influence any country adjacent to the UK. Um, it would let him put one into France more cheaply. We've already scored Europe, and it even won't break my command, my control of France. And if I De Gaulle later, it'll do it. You could put one in Canada, which is another very likely play. But I'm actually wondering if it might just be worth dumping this. Well, you know what? I'll play it for the Ops. I'm just going to headline Olympic Games. All right, East European unrest. Uh, the highest number goes first, so this triggers first. If there's a tie, the American headline triggers. So he's removing some Eastern European influence. Olympic Games. So the Americans get to decide whether they're going to participate in the Olympics or not. If they agree, we both roll a die. I, because I'm the sponsor, add plus two to my die, and the winner gets some victory points. Um, if they say no, the DEFCOM level drops by one, and I get to play a four ops card. They, or they do a four ops play. All right, we both roll the same, but I got my plus two, so I won, so I get two victory points. Hooray! Okay. So we know we have to compete in Africa. Or, sorry, Asia. Africa's fine. We no, there's no scoring there until the mid-game. And he may have a Middle East scoring card, although right now we'd get a point from that, which is okay. But Asia, we gotta do some work over here. Um, right, if I just play this during my turn, he gains a VP, which isn't the end of the world. So I think I'm gonna play my uh, special relationship for influence. And yeah, he can get his event, and I don't care. Um, well, tell you what, let me undo this. Just in case... Got to hide that before I hit that button. It's a little bit awkward. Let me trigger the event first and see what he decides to do. Is it going to affect my play? Probably not, but we may as well. So the AI is thinking you can see the little clock over here on his face. Bought himself a little extra time there with the lagging. Uh, he puts in Benelux. Didn't see that coming, but sure. All right, yeah, we'll place influence, and I think we'll just... Um, I could retake North Korea. Let me take Pakistan first. Oh, hold on. Coup. I want to make sure he can't coup in his turn. Hold on, I should use this as a coup attempt. Can't coup in Asia because of the limitation. Um, I could coup Lebanon. What if I just coup Panama? Success. Excellent. That gives me a presence over here. So between the uh, grab on Africa here and Central America here, we're, we're claiming a couple of important um, stepping stones into the mid game, especially since I did go and play my, um, my Castro card. So we're not gonna get our, our free influence in Cuba right now. All right, he's playing this just for the ops, for four points of ops. 
Aha! Oh yeah, there, I don't have my uh, Korean War, because it would have been kind of ideal there. Maybe that was a mistake, I don't know. Um, interesting, so he's taking that. Right, well he doesn't have to worry about Naster. Although it will come up at some point. He might have the Middle East scoring card. I'm not worried about any shenanigans. Yeah, I can just play this for points. I'll take Pakistan. He does have the Asia card. So he can do a big move in Asia. But yeah, see, he went from he went from domination to just presence, and I went from nothing to presence over the other way around. So he had, what, it was eight points, now it's zero? It's amazing. Sometimes there's a very tiny change can make a big difference. But yeah, that's not controlling anything here. God! Can, does he have all the four-point cards? I have a four-point card, but it's Marshall Plan. I really would prefer it not to take effect. <clears throat> I might just give him the points from Duck and Cover here. Because right now, this would be quite tough, because I would lose for every um, for everything he's got control over. I can take control of a rock, anyway. Let's do that. Um, tell you what, I'm just going to play this here. You get a point. Congratulations. I'm going to place influence. We're going to do that. And yeah, he's going to get a victory point here. Boop. Congratulations. Hmm. More coffee. So, Middle East, we're now tied. Yeah, equal number of battlegrounds. Because he had more battlegrounds and a non-battleground, so he had domination. And you get the plus one per battleground as well. Okay, there's his China card. Okay, he's not using it all in Asia, which is fine. So it's sort of a five-point card if you only use it in Asia. So now that he's got full influence in Israel, this would be really nice, but I think our odds... Um... Don't you tell me the odds here? No, I guess not. But yeah, so we get minus one, and we need a four to six, but we're gonna get minus one, two, three, four. We get minus four, so we literally can't can't win a thing here. Um, he's got domination, but you see it's not a huge point spread compared to some of the others. Um, I think I'm just going to have to play Marshall Plan here. I know I have Asia. Well, I guess, okay, I can do this. One, two, three in Middle East, and then there. So now we're tied on Battlegrounds in the Middle East. So he can't score on me here. But he's going to get tons of free dudes in Europe. Nice. Nice. Seven non-Soviet-controlled Western European countries. So he's not going to put any in France, which actually is kind of interesting. Getting a little higher on the Benelux. Locked in more in a few places. I, it could have been worse. So right now, we earn a point from scoring in Asia. Not much, but it's something. I want to take control of Jordan or something. Alright, he's playing that for influence. He's got all the four-point cards! What the horse shit? Yeah, letting me know. I still have I still have another turn. Okay, we'll break even in Asia now. Am I just okay with this? I might be. I suppose I should play this for points first. Place influence. Maybe I'll do this. I tell you what, I'll overprotect North Korea. So this will be very hard for him to break now, because he'd have to spend effectively four points to get two, which would be enough to, to break that. So we'll lock that in. I mean, he was making those moves. It was very cost inefficient for him, because he, he was spending two every time to break it, and I was spending one to get it back. All right, NORAD for influence, three points. Grab the Philippines, and then spreading out a little over there. I have to play my scoring card, or I will lose. So, tell you what, I'm going to play my scoring card and earn a whole point. Suez Crisis. So, he's going to play it. So, first the event triggers. So, this is removes four total influence from France, United Kingdom, and Israel. He doesn't have any in France, but I can remove two from Israel, and then two from the United Kingdom, which breaks control over all those, which is kind of interesting. 
I mean, right now he is dominating in Europe. He's going to put it back in Israel. Um, he didn't have enough mill ops. Yeah, well, he couldn't coup a battleground. He could have cooed a non-battleground to get some mill op points, but there may not have had a good opportunity, good a good place for it to do. Defcom level three. Oh, there's the Middle East scoring. Notice there was just a reshuffle here. So on turn three, as well as turn seven, it'll just work out this way. The draw pile, you're you're gonna start redrawing because you draw up to a total of eight cards in your hand. We've got the China card as well. Um, so you draw up to your eight, basically. And then um, if the draw pile runs out, you, you shuffle the discards and then keep drawing from there. And the same thing will happen on turn seven. The interesting thing about that is that anything that was played on round one or two has now been reshuffled and someone could have one of those cards in their hand right now, or at the very least will have it by the time of the next reshuffle. So anything that was played in round one and two might get played a second time. Um, we have not seen decolonization. I don't think he ever sent it to space, so he must have it in his hand. Decolonization is one of the most powerful Soviet cards. It is not an event that gets removed from the game after it's played, so you can play it more than once. The Soviets have a much, much easier time if they can play it on rounds one and two, then have it come back so they can play it again at some point between three to six. The American probably held in his hand the whole time. He's got it in his hand right now, um, and he'll probably throw it to space now or something like that, because that way it won't get reshuffled until turn seven. Now, the Middle East, right now would be break even. We got our Arab Israeli war again. We've got blockade. Now, he's probably got a card good enough for this. The other thing is, um, yeah, and I, I normally wouldn't have liked to do this. I played defectors at some point, which gave him a point, but also now it means it's reshuffled. He could theoretically have defectors in the hand that could cancel an event. What I might want to do is just wait for Blockade until he may have played more of his three-point cards. And if he can't, if he runs out of three-point cards, he will just lose all his influence in West Germany, which will bring him from six to zero, which would be huge. Oh man, we can Olympic Games again. Um, right, and there's no point in doing that. I, are we just headlining the Olympic Games again? So lame. Maybe I'll just headline the Romanian abdication. Because it's not doesn't have a lot of op point value. Um, U.S. doesn't usually play into Romania, so mostly it'll just give us control over Romania, and that's going to be fine. It's not a very strong event. Five-year plan. So I'm going to have to randomly discard a card. Son of a bitch! Well, I guess it could have been worse. Because here's the thing. If it was an American plant card, he could have played it. Well, there goes the hope of getting the blockade to clear West Germany out. Damn. All right. So we would like to do a coup. Um, for sure, because uh, if we bring the DEFCOM down to two, again, he won't be able to coup a battleground. In particular, if he cooed Libya, it would be a really, really good situation because it would improve our position in the Middle East. We know there's Middle East scoring over here. We don't need to worry about too much about Egypt because we do have a card that'll eventually do Egypt for us, theoretically. Um, so I'm gonna play this, not for the event, but for a coup. Coup here. So we need a five to have control over this. Do I? I think I'm going to play the China card as the coup attempt over here. This way I only need a four to take control. Um, and no matter what I roll, he's not going to have control over Libya. We roll the six. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll take it. I mean, it's the best possible outcome, so I guess I'll put up with it. Nice luck. So now we have Libya. Two points if we were to score the Middle East right now. Um, we need, oh yeah, we don't have a non-battleground country. If we had another point in Assyria, I think that would, that would give us domination, and therefore we would score more points. He's playing NATO. Kim and his four-point cards! Actually, he got to play NATO twice for four points. Just sick. I need to break a little control over here. Now, he knows, uh, oh, we got a reshuffle, right, so Europe, Asia, um, are both potentially events that can happen again, but the Middle East hadn't happened yet. So he knows either he was going to have it or I was going to have it this turn, no matter what. So he knows there's going to be scoring over here. And the AI is fairly cognizant of that. Um, I think we're going to play this for influence. We're going to do this for control over uh, South Arabia, one for Iraq and one for Syria, which will give us dominance over the Middle East. And if he wants to break control, again, he has to pay two points to put one point of influence in there. So it's quite expensive for him to do that. And he can't coup um, any of the battlegrounds. He could coup Syria. Because a non-battleground state wouldn't lower DEFCOM, would still give him middle, middle ops, 
which would actually be pretty good for him, potentially. Okay, he's playing for influence, so the event doesn't trigger. Ah, he spent two points to break my uh, dominance over Syria. Now, at some point, I'm going to have to play this card. The question is, when? How much do I want to keep bickering over the Middle East? Well, right now, I still have the tempo, and it's still forcing things. If I go place influence, if I go and reclaim Syria... Again, make it really expensive and cost inefficient for him to do that. Um, now, Europe can be scored again. I think what we need to do is we have to regain some control. Now, the Truman Doctrine has been burned already, because otherwise these are super vulnerable to hits. I'm going to retake East Germany. And yeah, I'll try to reclaim uh, Europe over here. The fact that he's playing so hard here makes me think he may not have a scoring card in his hand. Thing is, having scoring cards in your hand give you... Um, give you control over exactly when they fire, which is great. Unfortunately, the scoring cards don't do anything to improve your board position. So if you were to draw... Okay, so he drew Fidel, which is going to trigger the event for me because it's one of my events. So it does that. Then he's going to use the play influence. Um, interesting. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and play the, uh, the Middle East scoring right now because uh, we have our domination. Uh, it's not really going to get any better than that, so let's go ahead and get that in. Which gives him some tempo. Like, we score the points, which is great, but he's got tempo now. He doesn't have to respond to what I just did. And he can go and maybe enforce his position in Europe a little bit more. Europe and Asia are both going to be scored here. Um, they could be this turn. He could have it there, or at the very least, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come up again here. Ah, there's decolonization. Yeah, he held it until now. So he's going to trigger the event. So it lets me put four influence... Um, like one each in four nations, Africa or Southeast Asia. We're going to get to Thailand because that's really important for scoring later on. Um, and I can get a freebie in a, like a place to break his control. I don't have to do the two to one, which is kind of nice. African nations are really easy to coup. So it's always tricky to, like, if I do this, it's so easy to coup it back. But, I mean, I'm still going to be around. He can't do it because of the DEF COM. That's true. So we're a little protected there. I can always spread to Algeria later. Although I could bring us closer. But... Uh, if I do this, I could always coup this on battleground. I don't know. I don't know where the last one goes. Um, if there's nothing clear, probably things are relatively even. Always, you know, stressed about making some sort of mistake uh, somewhere along the way. Africa story scoring is not going to happen yet. Although I'm wondering if I should grab a non battleground place. You know, let me grab Cameroon. Just so I have, you know, I'll have control over that and might open up domination, which actually I think would happen now if I did this. See, domination? Let's do that just because it's scary. I mean, no one can have the Africa scoring right now, but it could happen in round four. So decolonization is insanely powerful. If he didn't have that, if I had that in my hand, I would have played this on turn one or two, 100% for sure. And then it would have gotten reshuffled, then it would have triggered again, you know, turn uh, three through six or something, or potentially seven. There's a big coup in Cameroon, which he could do. Yeah, I did open him up the ability to coup a non-battleground. Maybe that was dumb. That being said, um, this could be a really good realignment opportunity right over here. Um, this is still not really possible to work, so I think I'm going to do this. Let's take a look at the realignment. So I'm going to get plus two to my rolls. He gets plus one because he's got control over this. Um, so there's a 41% chance. It's easy to misread this, by the way. This is not the final state. This is the change, right? So there's a 40, let's say 42% chance that nothing changes. Um, because we both roll, we add our modifier, and the person with the highest number removes that much influence from the other. Now, I can't lose any influence here, so it doesn't matter how high he rolls, I won't lose anything. Only he can lose. Oh, okay, we lost. F that's a lot. So we got a perfect roll, removed everything in one go. We get a number of realignments, including to the uh, in, in, up to the power of the ops of the card. So I can run another one. I can't realign Europe, Middle East, or Asia right now because of limitations. There's nothing for me to target over here. So really, the only target is some other thing here. Uh, if I do Sudan, um, he'll get plus three to his roll. So we'll do Ethiopia. It's only plus two to the roll. It's still pretty unlikely to do anything. But, um, oh, how about South of Africa? That's good, actually, because he'll get plus one from...
You get a plus one for anywhere you have presence, not control. Uh, have I missed understanding how this works this whole time with a realignment? Listed below. Modifier. No, scroll the modifiers. Not the map. What the? Oh, maybe it's because I'm, I'm in mid other option. Modifiers. North Korea is adjacent. Having more influence. Oh! It's not about control, it's places you have more influence. So he has more influence in South Africa than I do, so he gets a plus one. Still, we take it. We have a 40% chance of removing his one influence. And we did! Ha! Alright, huge churn, actually. That was surprisingly good. We purged um, their presence in Africa. We don't have um, we don't have domination in Africa because we don't have a non-battleground country. But that's still fine. Remember, Africa can't be scored this turn anyway. Now, he can still spread to Africa via Ethiopia. All right, Comic-Con's going to trigger. So, one influence gets added in each non-US country. Well, not each, but four. Well, what we can do is we can use this to get Yugoslavia under control. We can use this to get Poland back under control, which is really nice. Um... I may want to over-defend something. I may want to bring Poland and Germany. Yeah, I'm going to bring Poland and East Germany. Oh, I already added Poland. But there you go. So I have a four difference. So I've overprotected this by one, which is fine. Um, I don't know. I'll put it in Bulgaria, which also give us... Well, we already had access to Turkey. Um, what if I just put it in Turkey instead? Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, you got to undo the whole turn. Protect and do this. Oh, dirt. You're not in... the. Um, you count as West Africa, or West Africa. You count as West Europe, not East Europe. That's interesting. All right, Bulgaria it is. We could coup Greece at some point too. Remember, it's not gonna, it's not a battleground um, country, so it won't lower the DEFCOM. So that was his Comic Con, right? Which adds this. I say Comic Con like it's a you know convention for comic book things, but it's like communist economy sort of block. Anyway, so he's going to place three points on there for influence. Uh, breaking Yugoslavia. So that cost him two to do that. And then he put one somewhere. Uh, Jordan, I think. So this is my last round. I'll play the Olympic Games um, for... So he's going to get one more. He could have a scoring card in his hand. Well, maybe what we do is we regain control of Yugoslavia and then pick up Thailand. Thailand's quite important. So Southeast Asia is funny. So you've got Western and Eastern Europe, but they're all in the European scoring region. You've got Asia and Southeast Asia. Now Asia is all of Asia, including the Southeast. Southeast Asia is special because it's only a small section. So it's Burma, Laos, slash Cambodia, Thailand, Vietnam, Malaysia, Indonesia, and the Philippines count as Southeast Asia. This card, which is a mid-war card, only runs once as well. It gets removed from play afterwards. And it's much more straightforward. It's not about control and domination. You just get one point for control of each place. You do get two for control of Thailand. So, yeah, I think I'm going to play this for influence. I'm going to take control of Thailand just to be kind of threatening and annoying. We could over-control it. But I'm not worried about him cooing Thailand, because assuming I do my job right, he, the DEFCOM's always going to be two for him, so he won't be able to safely coo a battleground here. Very different mechanics the position between the U.S. and the USSR. Uh, yeah, I'll regain control of Yugoslavia just to make it very point inefficient for him to clear that out. Okay, well, this is an, uh, an opponent revolt, so the Vietnam revolt just straight up adds two points to Vietnam. And for the rest of the turn, which is over now, so it doesn't matter, I get plus one to my coups or any operations in Asia. So the American player played that very well, and that he waited for the last possible minute to play that, so that I wouldn't get to take advantage of the plus one ops over there. Okay, headline, so this is round four, so the mid-war cards have been shuffled in. It's worth noting the discard pile did not get reshuffled. The mid-war cards just got shuffled into the draw pile, and there's plenty of them. And we drew some of them. Um, now is a nice time, potentially, for destalinization. Um, am I going to headline that? So destalinization lets you move for influence from your countries to someone else's. Um, so 
you know, we could pull out the one in Bulgaria, which isn't doing anything for us. We could pull out the one in West Germany, which isn't doing anything for us. Uh, we could pull out a couple of others from somewhere if we wanted to. And then you could use that to spread normally into Central and South America, as well as Africa. The thing is, we already got a pretty good job getting a presence there. Um, I'm not as stressed to play that as I normally would. We Will Bury You is interesting. Um, you can gain some free points from doing that. Also degrades the DEFCOM level. Which is kind of interesting. If we played this right now, the DEFCOM would go from 3 to 2. Being that this is a 4-point ops card, likely it will trigger first. If for some reason the American player has played a card that could decrease the DEFCOM level, it will kill him. Because I will bring it down to 2 on mine, then his will trigger it, bring it from 2 to 1, and he'll instantly lose the game. There is a possibility. Um, I don't know, actually. If we're tied, if the ops amount is the same, um, on the headline, the American one goes first. If he had a four points op card that could degrade the DEFCOM level, I could kill myself doing this. The thing is, I'm not sure this is actually the best thing to do. I think I just want to play this for ops. Containment, I would love to play this as my final action, just to, to burn it and get rid of it, which is really nice. Do we want to Cambridge 5, get some information on in his hand? Oh yeah, set the DEFCON to any level. Um, you could use that and then get rid of, you know, duck and cover in a fairly safe way. Um, it counts as five military operations, but I don't think so. Socialist government lets me remove three influence in the West. Um, no more than two per country, which would be enough to break West Germany, because it bring them to four, which would no longer give them domination there. I might just headline the socialist government. I think I like that. Europe hasn't been scored yet, and even though I don't have it in my hand, It'll force him to sort of respond over here. Uh, Voice of America is going to get headline. Removes four influence from... What has it say? Uh, from non-European countries. Yeah. Well, we're going to remove those two. Um, I could pull one out of Italy, but it's not even going to come close to breaking him. I can't coup in Europe because of the DEFCON level. What if I just break Greece? Kind of okay with that. All right. Go Voice of America. So you can remove everything from, say, Panama. Um, maybe from Thailand. Now, I'm not as worried about Panama, because normally it would be really bad, because then all of a sudden I'd lose all my influence here. But I still have Cuba, so I still have a way into the Americas, although it's less sexy. Okay, he's not clearing me out completely. He's just breaking control. Interesting. Now, man in Toronto is what? Oh, yeah. U.S. control. U.S. draws that. Yeah, that's really annoying. I have the score. Middle East star had been scored, but the rest has not. I can make a big play for West Germany here, but I don't think that makes much sense. Uh, and I probably want to do a coup to prevent him from doing stuff. Now, I mean, at some point, we're going to have Nasser for Egypt. But I'm wondering if it might be worth dropping a big coup bomb there anyway. I can't coup Asia or Europe. So it's Middle East. So there's nothing for me to coup in any of the Americas. Um, I could coup a non-battleground in Africa, but then that wouldn't lower the DEFCON, which would let the Americans do a coup, which I don't want. I think it has to be Egypt. Well, that really opens up him just dumping Nasser or something. Um, do I want to use a four-pointer? Not really. It's not the most important thing in the universe. What if I... I don't think a little baby coup with a two-pointer would be a good idea. If I do flip Egypt, and we do draw the um, Iraq or the um, Arabian, yeah, it's into the discard pile. Israeli war would be good. So the more um, uh, communist countries are surrounding, or the fewer American countries are surrounding Israel, that the easier that is. I, all right, I'll run this. That's too much. Arms race. All right. Wow. Yeah, total failure. No change done. But it def defends the DEFCON thing. So again, he can't coup a battleground, and he might have a hard time getting his mill ops, depending on if he coups a non-battleground. Just do that, which you probably should at some point. That's a little disappointing. But sort of just a coup for coup's sake, just to control DEFCON, it wasn't going to improve our board position, which is maybe non-optimal here. All right. He's Okay, he's not using it exclusively in... Asia. He did regain control over West Germany, which again is something I could have maybe dealt with. 
Um, I'm gonna rebury you, I think, for influence. We're gonna regain Thailand, Pakistan. I could break South Korea, but I don't think there's any point in doing that. I think we take Poland, and we may want to overprotect Poland. Now, he could have scoring cards anywhere. He did remove some of my influence over here. It's possible. Yeah, let's do this. Make it a little harder for you to remove me from Panama. Because just the one is just... Oh, well, again, he couldn't coup me because of the DEFCON level. But still, I'll do it. That way he can't just dump... If he's got Central American scoring, he can't just dump it for zero. Maybe I should have put in Colombia, because then as a follow-up turn, actually, I could have spread to Ven... Yeah, I probably should have. I should have gone Colombia, so that my next turn could have been something like Venezuela and Panama. With a three-pointer, like, just play destalinization. I don't know, I could move some dudes with it. But there's less need. I think we're quite happy to play it for the ops. And then it keeps the, uh, the event in the deck as well. So at some point I could draw it again, or my opponent might draw it again. Yeah, we're just gonna play this for influence. Oh! He must have! South Amer uh, American scoring. He's working too hard over here. Well, he's also doing some European stuff too, but let's go ahead and do that. So he could do a non-battleground coup of Colombia, which would block me off a fair bit from South America, especially since I played the other thing. The, the destalinization. What's my timer at? We're over an hour. Turn four. Well, we'll put a cut in here um, after this round. Okay, playing it for influence. Okay. Interesting. Do I want to coup Haiti? I mean, he's still got presence in Cuba, so he's still going to be able to spread back out. Just pick up Venezuela. Give me domination for now. Maybe not for very long. But then it lets me spread maybe more... Um, and yeah, I'm pretty pleased with this situation. I would like to play Containment as my last card. I don't want to send it to space. I want to play it so it's no longer in the deck. And if I play it as my last card, he is going to get the, the plus one ops advantage on one play. But that'll be about it. And then we've removed a very dangerous annoying card from the game. Okay, Warsaw Pact is formed. So either I can remove US... Um, Countries. Okay, control doesn't matter. Just Eastern Europe, remove four points. I could remove three from Poland and um, one from Yugoslavia. Which is possible. Or I could add five. No more per, than that per country. Um, anyway, five is obviously more than four. So I could add maybe two to Poland to overprotect it. I could add one to Yugoslavia to lock it in. Or two to Poland and then just drop three in Czechoslovakia or Hungary or something like that. Or I could do, I could do, yeah, two in Poland, maybe one in Yugoslavia and then one in Bulgaria. Maybe I'll, um, maybe I'll add. Overprotect Poland. We've got four there, so we've got the overprotection, which is okay. Yeah, I mean, Yugoslavia is not critical, but make his life difficult. All right, let's see what he does with his three from this. But yeah, we, we have domination in Europe. He only has presence. We both have presence in South, Central America. I have domination in South America. I think it's, you know, it's very thin, but it is there. And he has no easy way to get here, barring, like, events and stuff. Uh, realignment in Cuba. I actually won the role, apparently, and he lost influence there. Which is kind of nice, because it's going to make it harder for him to do more realignment. He gets two more, because he gets three total realignments. Um, he could try to do Cuba some more. I mean, he's got he's got a plus one to his role from Haiti. I don't know if he gets plus one from the USA. Yeah, he does. Plus two, but nothing happened, because I keep rolling high. He's got a third realignment. He'll try Cuba again. If he, only, if he manages to succeed, but only by one, I'll still have control over Cuba, which would be nice. He must have South America, or Central American scoring in his hand. He's trying way too hard over here. No ch Oh my god, we got really lucky on these rolls. So, 
Knowing that, oh, it'd be great to grab Mexico, but I can't reach it. That's it. If he had one influence in Mexico, I could coup it. Well, I couldn't because of DEFCON, but still. I could try to realign it to remove him from Haiti. And then what, though? I don't like that. I think, if anything, it might just be a little bit more influence here. Um, yeah, let's play this. Now, it's pretty easy to coup Nicaragua. Unfortunately, I can't reach Honduras, and I don't have enough to grab Costa Rica. I could break Haiti, but if I just do this, this will bring me to domination. I don't feel the need to put a second one in here, because it's still so easy to coup this, and he can do it this, no matter what the DEFCOM situation is. Maybe what I'll do, because I'm pretty sure he's, he wants to score here, I'm wondering about overprotecting Panama. Um, because he's still got, uh, three more plays. Let's do this on the assumption that he's got Central American scoring, and we're gonna make it just very hard for him to dislodge me. It's a big assumption, but it's gonna be there. We have two more. We can space one. It'll come back, but it's not so bad. Okay, so my ops get plus one, so now I like, don't want a space. It's the same as containment, but the other way around. So it's also going to only affect me for one turn. He must have a scoring card, because he would have wanted to play um, the Brezhnev Doctrine last. So he must be waiting for that. He's got Mexico, which is going to give him plus one from a battleground. Um, but I still have domination here. Not that it's worth very much. You can see the points here in Central America are not as meaningful. Um, right now it's four points. Presumably that's what he's going to do. There's nothing as far as I can tell that could truly improve my situation. Um... How come I don't have control here? Oh, control is all the battlegrounds. If I had Mexico, which I can't do. If I had Mexico, that would give me control, which would be five points. It's an extra two, but again, well... Slightly more than that, because I'd be taking away one of his battlegrounds, and my I would control a country that's adjacent to the superpower. But yeah, we, we gotta go somewhere else. Um, see, the problem with this is it lets the US player make sure the next draw is good for him, and not for me, or some combination thereof. I think... I think I'm gonna space our man in Tehran. It, it will come back. Like, it would be really good to play it, but we might be able to avoid having come up. So I'm going to space race him and again play containment as my last action next turn. Let's say space race duck and cover because it's not like it gets removed regardless. But I'm kind of okay for maybe giving up like some victory points on playing a duck and cover at some point for a three point op, whereas this is maybe a lot scarier. Yeah, I'll just throw him in space. Failed. Oh well. Still discards a dangerous card. <laughs> so I'm assuming... Oh, he's got two turns left. I forgot about that. Actually, so he could take another whack at me in Central America. Would I want to do things differently? So he's got... Where's uh, OPEC. Um, so this is going to be some victory points for some control. Did I get five from OPEC? So Libya, Iraq... Uh, wow. Okay, that's pretty huge. Um... Played, oh, there we go. He played Malaysia and Dominican Republic, so he's got that. Oh, I don't control more nations, so I don't have domination anymore. Right. And then Malaysia over there. Still, I think I still kind of... Well, I guess I get to choose what I'm going to use this for. Um, I could just coup one of the non-battlegrounds over here. I think I will. I can't coup Mexico because it would lower the DEFCON. So I'm going to do this. It's going to be really easy to do. Could, hold on. If I realigned, um, we'd both get... Oh, he get plus two. I would get three shots at it. I mean, odds are fairly good. And then I could use, you know, more realignments. So, in a sense, potentially the strongest move might be to realign Haiti. And if that's successful, I could realign the Dominican Republic which would be awfully nice. That might, you know, move me forward into the strongest position. I'd still have one realign left for maybe a frail roll over here. The coup is safer, and assuming um, if I failed, like the, the realignment completely, I'd only earn two points. If I succeed um, on either one, it's, you know, it's four points, so it's an extra couple. All right, I'll coup. 
because it's guaranteed. So yeah, he gets plus one to his ops, but theoretically his final move is not scoring. What? He's going to coup with JP down over there. Succeed. I am stunned. Maybe he thought I had it because of the way I was playing in there too. I mean, it's still going to come up we at some point. All right, folks, we're going to go ahead and put a cut in here. We're going to continue the, the, uh, the, the, the video in the next episode. Thanks for watching. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.